Yeah. 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 I can't in the in the in the hobo fun house. What do you think of the hobo fun house? Do, do, do you think it's do you think it's really fun? A miller claw. Is that what you think about the hobo the, the Bray Wyatt Firefly Fun House? Oh! Oh, she just beats me up all the time. Seriously. So, yep, that's right. That's, that's my intro. Let me get things set up a little bit more professionally here. Microphone in. There we go. Yeah, it's so much different. Almost semi-professional. Well, welcome back. I hope everyone had a good Easter. Hope everyone enjoyed Easter Mania. I'm the one and only Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. And that was a little intro. <laughs> oh boy. Someone at WWE Creative was, had a little too much Easter ham. Some way too much Easter greens. And way too much too much Easter vodka. I'll tell you what, this was actually a pretty good show overall. And I'll get into to some things as, as I go along. And you'll know why we you know, have my little entrance montage. I'm going to have an auto montage. Ooh. Oh, that's right. It's only it's just barely midnight. I'm doing this early first. So since I'm doing this early, let's get right down to it. This is Monday Night Raw. This was actually a really good Raw. I guess they, someone thought of something, because this was, for the most part, minus a few things. It was super entertaining. So we're in Des Moines, Iowa. And you know what that means? Triple H comes out. It says Motorhead Music. <laughs> The King of Kings, Rex Regis. Oh, wow, that's actually right. King Rex Regis. I remember my line. I remember something from high school. That's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, Seth Rollins comes out because he is from Des Moines, Iowa. Huge face pop. And um, to make a long story short, Triple H says, everyone's after that be belt that you're holding. So therefore, in order to determine who are you going to face on May 19th, that's good. That's a really good breathing period between pay-per-views. That's kind of what it should be. Because it's actually been it'll be about a month and a half before the next pay-per-view. It's good because WrestleMania just oh, zonks everything. But more about some more live wrestling. Soon. Um, but uh, he comes out and says, you know what? You need a match for Money in the Bank. That's it. And May 19th. I think that's right. Let's see my calendar. Oh, that part's covered up. Oh, wow, that is right. May 19th. Oh, that's good. I'll have to get breakfast for a while. So that's a whole other issue. But and so everyone wants that belt, specifically poking that belt. And then, of course, Samoa Joe comes out. He referenced Specky two belts. He should be Samoa Joe two belts or Joe two belts. Um, in no particular order, Drew McIntyre comes out. Rey Mysterio comes out. The Miz shows up. Baron Corbin shows up. AJ Styles shows up. They all have their moment. Think why they should be champ. But this leads to two true, one really good one. I was shocked at how good it was. Again, it's a weird up and down raw where 
the highs were really high. Lows were down there. So, but so this starts off with our first match of the night. We have AJ Styles versus Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Samoa Joe. I think my voice is a little shot. I've been doing corporate time a lot. Again, watch Easter Mania. So the video I posted. When did I post that? This morning? Yeah, it had to be this morning. Oh, wow, that's right. I did wake up this morning for work. Oh, wow. I think I actually lost weight during Easter, too. I moved weight. Enough about that, though. This was a really fun match. It starts off, Joe just beats up everyone. Joe works so stiff. He's so snug. It's so good. Samoa Joe could do no wrong. It's, it's, although, well, I'll tell you what happened in, in a moment. The Samoa Joe clears the ring. Eventually, AJ Styles gets his comeback. Um, he tosses Samoa Joe out. Then, what I like is that they had a really good probably seven to eight minute segment with just AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio, which is something we really haven't seen in WWE. I'll tell you what, if you're going to do new stuff, you're going to get a good review from this guy. So that's pretty cool. Um, eventually, Joe gets tossed out. Oh, that was fun, though. I mean, everything AJ sees a Styles clash on Ray. Ray would reverse it. Ray would hit his flippy stuff on AJ. Um, he would tease flippy stuff. AJ would tease flippy stuff. So good. I think... Well, I am going to bump this up, I think. The only thing that, that annoyed me... It was a 20-minute match, so it was actually pretty good. Okay, yeah, I know what that is. Again, Ray's just really good. He just... This is probably saying only because I've seen Rey Mysterio wrestle as a cruiserweight in WCW. It does seem that he's lost his step. Hey, listen, Father Time's truly undefeated. And I'm sure with all the wear and tear on, on, on Ray's body, I mean, you can just kind of see he's not. Crisp isn't the word. Just like a second off, trust me, I'd be like two days off. Don't, don't anyone get your idea that, that I'm a superior person because no way am I that, that quick. I mean, I'd be, I'm 10 days behind Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio just seemed to be a second or two behind AJ though. <laughs> and I look at who I'm comparing him to. I'm comparing Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles. Wow, if I'm making that comparison, and that's my only gripe, you know, it had to be good. Um, Joe eventually does insert himself in there. But Joe's just so good. Um, Ray Mysterio did eventually hit the 9 on Joe, went for some slingshot thing. I think AJ Styles caught him. Did the power bomb of Ray Mysterio onto Samoa Joe. And I think Ray's elbow, when he went out, because typically when you take your bumps, you kind of spread your arms out, you spread surface area, so it doesn't, like, crush your back. Um, actually, that's kind of the newer way people are talking. I think I was shown to go from here right before you, you do that. Older people, they just said, yep, you just, you just stay tucked. I think other ways are like, yep, just spread out right away. So I think Ray hit Joe truly just because of position, like right on the bridge of the nose, or kind of this part right here on the nose. And then AJ wasn't done with the power bomb. AJ Styles hit the Styles Clash, which we have not seen in a while, on Ray Mysterio, but on to Joe. Oh, that was so amazing. And AJ Styles picks up the win. Joe leaves the ring, and he, he's trickling blood. Again, in this kind of area, it looked like, again, that, that inadvertent elbow from Ray. It's still a great visual, though. Yeah, busted open the heart away. I like that. 
So therefore, I'm actually going to upgrade this match. I mean, AJ Styles won, but this was a flaming yawn match. Then the next match, not so much. Again, really good. Oh, yeah. So it's Naomi, to no fault of her own, versus Billy Kay. The announcer. Oh, and Renee needs to lower her mic. Because one, you can hear Renee literally laugh. And you get other off comment words from her. So she has to keep some distance from the mic. She has to follow the advice they've been giving her. Tranquilo. Because again, you can just hear like laugh in the background. It's like, <laughs> it's like uh, it was funny, Renee. Not that funny though. Again, we had a botch. Not a good way you want to start off a match. Um, so it's Naomi versus Peyton Billy K. Not good. Um, the announcer botched the name. Hey, it happens. That's only I think. Every, like, couple hundred hours, they might botch a name. That's not too bad. Naomi can throw down. Billy Kay, however, I think needs to go back to NXT because she is master of wrestles. More specifically, she is the master of the, stan of the standard armbar. I can do that too, folks. And Naomi can throw, though. I'm, I love the fact that she does the kind of split like a moonsault, almost a Starship Pain. She has to add a couple more rotations in for the Starship Pain, which is, by the way, one of my favorite moves. Starship Pain. Oh, my. Let's see. My Mount Rushmore of wrestling moves. So there's four of them Starship Pain, Spanish, Standing Spanish Fly. Canadian Destroyer, Pile Driver. Wow, that's a pretty solid list. So um, Naomi um, does roll up Billy Kay. This is a ham sandwich. All I have to say, Peyton Royce has a super tiny waist. And I know only because I was teasing some friends today, some lady friends today about bikinis and Brazilian V-string French cut thong bikinis with a mini triangle top, mini triangle mesh top. Something ridiculous. But she's a size negative one. But in women's women clothes have strange sizes. And there's actually a size zero for women. I, I, I mean, to me, again, any ladies out there, you can feel free to, cor to correct Hobo Tom. Send me an email saying, you don't know what you're talking about, you, you fat bastard. Level of Steiner math fatness. You're 100,075%. 100, Fat. Too much of a fat ass. That's hundred and sixty-three percent fat ass. Or whatever other Steiner math gets involved. But Peyton Rice is tiny. I mean those belts look huge on her. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Cause then we have the next one in the uh, Triple Threat series. We have The Miz versus Drew McIntyre versus... Hey, you're not Baron Corbin Wolf. Baron Corbin. I kind of binge-watched a lot of wrestling while working. So um, for the most part, Drew's just so beastly looking. 
I wish I had Drew McIntyre's body. I'd go to work without a shirt. Where are my trunk? Where are like boxer briefs to work? Oh wait, that's a whole. That's that's, that's another wrestler's gimmick. What am I doing giving away gimmicks like that? It should be fine. To gives WWE a shiny nickel or something. Whoa. Um, for the most part, first part of the match was a heel double team on the Miz. Um, the Miz does try to fight back. Eventually, when they're on the outside, Miz does get the upper hand on Baron Corbin, so he eliminates, and eliminates Baron Corbin for a while. Miz and Drew go at it. So good. I mean, Drew just really manhandles the Miz um, until Baron Corbin comes in. And then Miz kind of gets lucky, throws Drew into one corner, and reverses that. Drew, I think, gets gets distracted by Baron Corbin. And of course, that distracted heels, that, that's like the, uh, that's, that's always their downfall. So, but then he was doing the yes kicks to him in tandem. That was good. Although that slap. One, but Drew did the miss. Oh! I think Maurice felt that. Um, Cor then, of course, Corbin and Drew start to go at it because Drew doesn't like the fact that Baron Corbin's trying to, trying to win. He's like, who are you? Um, Miz eventually takes Baron Corbin out. Miz gets the figure four on, on, on Drew, and I thought he was going to tap for a moment. And eventually, Drew just... He teased the Future Shock DDT. Again, bringing up that old wrestling book, repertoire. I love it. Love to see new moves. Even though he does the, the tease of it. Because um, he did he eventually hit the Claymore kick onto the Miz. Brandon Corbin just, like, throws him off him. and. Corbin, the opportunistic heel, wins. I mean, for the most part, this really showed one great character work from all three wrestlers for a change. So when they do that, they, they tease new moves. These are new matchups. I'm getting excited about this. I'm, I'm beginning to Hulk out. Yeah, brother. Whoa. It's going to get a filet mignon rating. And then we get the Sami Zayn promo. It just runs on the crowd. It says, you can all go to hell! Whoa. Sammy. That needs a tranquilo. And then... Oh, they just showed some drunk fans. I forget what it was. They just showed fans with their, with their overpriced $9 big cup of beer. I hope that was beer. You don't want to be drinking yellow stuff, folks. That is Des Moines, Iowa. But so this led to the next match. It was uh, Cedric Alexander versus Cesaro. Cesaro's so good. I mean, he's so much stronger than Cedric. Cedric is very strong in his own regard. He does have his um, feats of strength against Cesaro. Cesaro just has the timing down. There's... And everyone's mentioned this. Cesaro has that it factor. No matter what he does, the timing's impeccable. It's crisp. Um, anything he does, if it's selling, um, just being a really darn good worker. I mean, Cesaro was so good. Uh, Cedric Alexander did get some flippy stuff in. Again, Cedric so good. But in the end, Cesaro was too strong for him. Hey, what I enjoyed it again. This roller coaster, ride, the down of Sami Zayn, now the up of this match. This is a surf and turf match. And then this leads us to the Viking name again. They're getting better, though, I'll give them this much. At least they're the Viking Raiders. That makes a little more sense than the Viking experience. They, they still come out chanting, War! 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 
Well, again, it's a simple one word chant. If you can get the crowd to chant with you, power to you. So the Viking Raiders had her. <laughs> the WWE was listening to the WWE Universe poo poo and caca all over the Viking experience. Viking Raiders, Viking, Viking Raiders. Actually, it comes off a lot more quickly on the tongue, too. Not Viking experience. It's Viking Raiders. It's what Vikings did. Um, so during this, um, there was a little bit, there was some promos. Uh, there was an Uso promo. Usos are so good. Um, again, they're having a promo be, um, because uh, Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins sell the belt. They're a pretty good package. They're, they're, they're gelling together a little bit more. At least look the same. Or well, they don't look the same, but they, but they have the same coordination, I guess, going on. But the Viking Raiders, that flow is so much better. Just took on the Lucha House Party. Squash match. I don't think the Lucha House Party got in anything. They were just cannon fodder. So this match is really just a can of soup. And that's kind of what happens with squash matches, unless they're super entertaining. But this was just a, a raid, raiding party. What other thing can I say? A war party. Raiding party. Raiding season. Yeah, this was just a squash. Again, a can of soup. And then we have Becky Lynch comes out. Um, and she's going to take on Alicia Fox. And for the most part, this is a pretty good showcase of Becky. Alicia Fox also looks skinny, too. She has that long, lanky body. I didn't realize her torso was so long. Because <laughs> this time she came out wearing, like, white female trunks, a white bra, but there's no other colors in between. I mean, there's a huge, oh, this sounds terrible, huge space of brown. I mean, that's the way it is. Sounds terrible, but again, just a very long frame. That's the better way to put it. Almost looks awkward. Um, again, this was really a showcase of Becky. Um, Alicia Fox to get, I think, one move on the outside. Um, Becky Lynch to get the disarmor. And you know what happens when we got a feud building, baby? Lisa Evans. The little sassy southern bill came down. And we got ourselves a dust to finish. Because she clocked Becky Two Belt face with a woman's right. Elisa Fox. She gets DQ'd. Becky Lynch wins. And what's known as a dust finish, baby. So I don't know. This is a dusty old ham sandwich. Now, I hope my sons, as I look down on them from, from my main, from my front row seat of the Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior up here in the great pearly ring in the sky. I hope my sons, both Dustin and Cody Reynolds, don't have a dusty finish. They're going to face each other at AEW, baby. And we should have no death to finish. I just want these two boys knock the slob out of each other. So much frustrations with them, boy, them two boys. That's enough of Dusty Rhodes, though. The American dream. So again, Alicia, I don't know. 
Hey, I'm glad to see Alicia Fox back. And if she's sober, power to her. Although I'm sure, because that was the reason why Arn Anderson got fired, because he let Alicia Fox wrestle after after Alicia Fox was imbibing in adult beverages. I hate to tell you, Vince. I'm sure Arn has let Ric Flair wrestle under worse conditions and worse impairment. So, yeah, and always the professional. And, and, and with Alicia Fox's previous thing, that, that was no Jeff Hardy sting issue from Impact Wrestling where the referee looked at him. Not happening. When Eric Bischoff comes out, he does that. And Sting's like, really? Damn it. Um, so then we have Ricochet versus Robert Roode. They've repackaged Bobby Roode. It looks good. <laughs> it almost reminds me of ravishing Rick Roode and his mannerisms, his, his almost body type, and that mustache. That perfectly formed mustache. I think if... I, I could actually do that, but I have to go to work tomorrow, though. I don't want to look too weird. Yeah, see, because I could have a pretty good mustache. I think once I actually did. I just, I just look good. It was very Tom Selleck Magnum PI looking. <laughs> That's going to be the, t it's going to be, um, oh wait, Ray Wyatt. It's the, um, <laughs> Magnum PI mustache hobo funhouse. That's okay. I needed to laugh. This was a really good match. I mean, I mean, Rude looks looks great though. Um, he's going back to a more traditional style of wrestling. A lot of wrestles, but I mean, it was a good it was a good match. I think I was just so distracted <laughs> by the mustache. I mean, um, they're finally giving Ricochet probably a little bit shorter schedule because they've realized, hey, we're gonna burn this guy out if we keep on doing this to him. Again, he's still doing the flippy, flippy stuff. Amazing. Um, Robert Roode, again, he's a more grounded, more classic Matt wrestler. I'll tell you what. That glorious DDT. I haven't seen him hit a glorious DDT like that, I think, since his days in NXT. Because that was like a spike glorious DDT. That was. And Ricochet. For this tells you truly how great a professional Ricochet is. He spiked himself. I mean, I know there's one cartoonish cell of a DDT where a wrestler will literally like stand on their head for a couple seconds. Ricochet almost did that. And he may look amazing. And trust me, Ricochet, he, he can afford to lose. Especially if it's to Robert Rude. Like, that was just I was shocked. It was good. They had different match combinations. This is a good cheeseburger match. Although, Corey Graves and, and Renee. Oh, 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 Renee. I think it had to do with Robert Rude's mustache and just his look. Again, going back to a ravishing Rick Rude look. Corey Graves, and I quote, or I shall paraphrase, there's going to be a spike in pregnancies here in the Midwest. To which Renee said, that's not how you get pregnant. So it's it's getting to that point where it's almost so bad 
actually funny. <laughs> that one phrase. Gosh. Oh, wow. What are the strips? And then we had a Firefly Funhouse? With a complete repatching of Bray Wyatt. I don't know what to say. So if I have to pick my notes up now. They've completely changed Bray Wyatt. They have, and I'll insert this, Waylon Mercy the Buzzard as a puppet. There's a bunny puppet. There's like a Teen Titans Raven esque puppet. And Bray Wyatt is trying to make himself look like Mr. Rogers. Uh, someone was on the happy juice and creative. That's all I'm going to say, folks. You have to see it for yourself. It was almost like Bray Wyatt was doing a cross between Pee Wee Herman and Mr. Rogers. Nah, it was just bad. But the night ended with AJ Styles versus Baron Corbin for the for the right to face Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank on May 19th, which barring some weird stuff at work. I wonder if I'm, am I doing a lot of work that day? Take a look at my calendar quickly. See, this is a long Raw video. It's weird. Oh, wow, I only work 8 to, eight thirty to 5. That's good. Or supposedly. So AJ Styles, let's get back on track. AJ Styles versus Baron Corbin. Baron's just strong. AJ's just quicker. He's definitely more agile. I mean, AJ is such a pro. He's still selling the effects from his match. Every so often, he grabs his back. Oh. My back. Um, Again, that Pele kick is awesome. Um, uh, Corbin get, does get us his moments in. Um, AJ Styles gets the calf crusher in. Eventually does finish off Baron Corbin with a phenomenal form. I'll tell you what. If it wasn't, if it was anyone but Baron Corbin, it probably would have given this match a higher rating. But this was really good, though. It's hard to complain about an AJ Styles match. Baron Corbin is not the smoothest individual. Again, it might be that height and just somewhat lankiness of Baron Corbin. Hey, you're not me. I'm me. No, you're a hobo. I mean, that's neither here nor there. But I, I, honestly, this was a good cheeseburger match. And it was raw. I thought it was really entertaining at points. I think the thing is, some of the bad points were just bad. But some of the bad, bad points were just so bad. You just had to laugh at it. It's the theater of the absurd. Oh, I have to add that into my title, too. The theater of absurd mustaches and hobo. Oh. That's right. I have to write that down. Cause so it's the theater of absurd mustaches and a hobo funhouse. Title for video. Mm. 
again, I think next year in review, you're going to actually see how things actually get done here. It's bad. Um, a couple news and notes for this week. Again, on SmackDown, it's going to, tomorrow it's going to be my normal SmackDown show. Probably be up, probably again Wednesday morning ish. And then Friday, barring any unforeseen circumstances, evil work. I'm going to be live. So you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, at the Multicultural Center in Daytona Beach, Florida, probably about 6.37 ish, when NXT comes to town here in Daytona Beach. Um, Oh, that music's cool. I have to add that in my little outro. So, everyone, have a good night. Bye.